Hey guys, welcome to part 3 of this tutorial series on Arch Linux. Last time, we covered the final steps of installing the base operating system, which included changing root with Arch Troot, setting our locale and generating the locale.conf. We created a symbolic link for our time zone, edited our machine's host name, created a new user, and set passwords for it, as well as the root account, and downloaded and installed the Grub bootloader after which we were able to remove our installation media and boot into our new Arch system, concluding with adding our user into sudoers and using sudo with pacman to download new system fonts. If you're not at this point, please check out parts 1 and 2 of this series. If you're following along, let's continue. So by default, sudo does not allow you to autocomplete commands using tab. Uh, since we're going to be using sudo a lot, um, this is going to be very handy to have. So let's edit our bashrc file, which basically controls how our command line behaves. sudo nano dot bashrc. We're going to go down to the very bottom and we're going to add a couple lines. Uh, type out complete hyphen cf space sudo and then we're going to do complete hyphen cf and man. Man is a manual command which allows you to look up any command I'll show you. So I'm going to hit control x, y to save and enter to quit. Now let's show you man. For example I'm going to type in sudo. It's going to bring a manual entry up for any given command and this will help you out immensely figure out what the hell you're doing in the command line. In order to navigate this you can use the page up and down arrows but for now we don't really need this. If you want more information please be sure to check out my basic Linux commands tutorial. So I'm gonna hit Q to quit. Anyway, now that that is done and our bashrc file is saved, let's ping 8.8.8.8 .8 Alright, so if this happens or for whatever reason you don't have a connection Type out sudo dhcpcd. It's going to allow your computer to request an IP address from your internet gateway. So now you should be able to connect. Ping 8888. Yeah, it looks like we have a connection. So I'm going to hit Control C to stop the command. So from here, we're going to download and install something called ifplugd, which is part of netconfig, a network manager. So to do this, we're going to use sudo pacman, capital S, and ifplugd. So once it's done, we are going to change directories into etsy network.d and we're going to create a symbolic link to a configuration template located in this examples folder here as you can see so sudo ln with s uh, examples then ethernet dhcp and we're going to hit period uh, a period is shorthand for this working directory so what I'm telling this is to create a symbolic link from the file located in the examples directory to this directory. So I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to run ls to show you and you'll see that ethernet.dhcp is now in this directory. So let's check it out. sudo nano uh, ethernet dhcp and you'll see now that this is a template for uh, how this network manager uh, handles dhcp uh, connections. So you'll see here ethernet basic DHCP Ethernet connection using the correct interface. This is where you change your interface uh, in case you have a different network card or something. Uh, be sure that this is under DHCP unless you have a static IP address for this computer, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Just know that you will need to modify this if you do have a static connection. And you'll see down below that you have uh, IP version 6 uh, configurations commented out. So since we're not using IPv6, we're going to just leave that commented out. So it looks like I don't need to change anything. I'm going to exit using Control-X. 
So now that that is set up, let's make sure that the system boots this particular daemon on startup. So sudo system control enable net auto wired dot service. Now, if you're on a real machine using a wireless connection, I'll leave a link down below just in case you missed it in the second video to the Arch Linux wiki so you can check out how to set up a wireless connection. It's very straightforward. I use something called Wi-Fi menu, but there are other options as well. All right, so now let's focus on optimizing Pac-Man. Arch by itself as a base system is quite small, so it, by using default settings it really didn't affect us much. But now that we're going to start downloading software, especially software that can get rather big, it's going to become more important that our Pac-Man is optimized so that it, u it uses mirrors that are geographically closer to us to ensure that we get the best connection speeds possible. So let's start by defragmenting our Pac-Man using Pac-Man Optimize. We're going to be editing Pac-Man's mirror list. So before we get started with that, let's make sure to create a backup. So sudo cp for copy using the VF switch. Go to Etsy, pacman.d mirror list, and we're going to create a backup in Etsy, pacman.d mirror list. And I'm going to make it .bkup, but you can name it whatever you want, just as long as you have a backup in case we do screw it up. Cool, so let's go to our mirror list now, sudo nano etsy pacman.d mirror list. You'll see now that you'll have a list of all the mirrors that Arch, or rather Pacman uses, to check out repositories and download and install software. You can see that the mirrors are located all over the damn place. This is nice for default installations for people that don't want to modify this, but for example since I'm here in the United States and if by chance the first server on the list were to be down for some reason, Pac-Man would go to Germany, all the way to Germany to check out uh, packages. Now this isn't very good for us. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose mirrors that are geographically near me so that I get the best speeds. So what you can do, since we're nano, uh, use the keyboard shortcut Control K to remove an entire line. So I'm going to go through, remove servers that I don't need, and I'll come back when this is done. All right, so as you can see, I've left about eight or nine servers here. So the way Pac-Man works, it looks at this uh, configuration mirror list file and goes from the top down uh, depending on connection. So for example, it checks the first server first, but if that server is down, it goes to the second one, etc., etc. Now this is all well and good, but they're not sorted by connection speed. They're just ordered pretty much from top to bottom in this file. So while this is better, it's not best. But there's nothing more we can do through editing this file from here. So we're going to hit Control X, Y to save, and Enter to quit. So we can use an included command called rank mirrors. And this is going to sort the servers in our mirror list based on connection. So we're going to point rank mirrors at Etsy, pacman.d, mirror list. And it's going to go through and sort them based on connection. Another option is to use a script called reflector, which retrieves a mirror list, filters them by age and connection, and then overwrites our current mirrors file. So what I'm going to do here is create another backup here, just in case Reflector 
by the off chance it screws up our mirror list, we can reload our last one. Now this step is completely optional, Rank Mirrors does a fine job, but... So first we need to get Reflector, Pseudo, Pac-Man, capital S, Reflector, and install it. Pseudo, Reflector, dash dash, verbose, L-switch, 10. This is going to take the 10 best servers based on connection. P-switch, I'm going to select HTTP. Now, uh, Arch has two different types of servers. It's got eight, uh, FTP mirrors as well as HTTP mirrors. Unfortunately, though, the FTP mirrors are throttled to a low speed, so I'm going to or using this, you can ensure that the servers are using HTTP. Alright, next up we're going to dash dash sort, of course by rating, and save the results into Etsy pacman.d mirror list. Hit enter. Alright, cool. So now that that's done, let's update Pac-Man using capital S and YY. Excellent. Alright, next time we're going to cover how to download software packages from the Arch User Repository, or the AUR. So, thank you for following along up to this point. I hope this has been very informative and helpful, and I'll catch you guys next time.